when I first started getting excited about recording things and I got a uh, mini disc recorder and I learned how to make uh, contact microphones with piezo discs um, and I made a stereo contact mic and it was winter time and I put the contact mics on uh, a pond, a frozen pond and then threw chunks of ice across it and really liked the sound of that. Plus I've always, I've always enjoyed colds like winter. Winter is my favorite time of year. Uh, I love snow, I love ice. Today I'm in the St. Louis Del Mar Loop to find out more about what creativity is. I'm going to meet up with my friend John Tambuckle. He's an electronic music artist and founder of the record label Cavist Records. John started out in the UK listening to pirate radio stations. I'm not sure how accurately I can remember how I got started on that. I seem to remember getting a, a radio, just a like a Walkman type thing, it was just a small FM receiver with headphones and finding the, uh, radio stations that they were pirate stations, they weren't playing commercial things and they weren't following any format, it was just sort of straight, very strange sounding to me music which was, I found out, was you know the UK hardcore and uh, techno and things. So these pirate radio stations, they were playing tracks that that were you know pretty widely recognized or were they you know like stuff people were making and well there were so many of them and i lived just outside of london which was sort of a hotbed i don't know exactly how many different stations i could pick up but um that you could tune through and the re reception was of varying quality and uh looking back now I, th I i enjoy the fact that the reception was sort of poor you know i i kind of like the radio static mixed in with it I don't know if I could, even now, after having learned a lot about this music, could identify many of the tracks, so I don't think they were very widely known, and they were probably things people had written, you know, and saved up their money and made limited pressings of, and they'd play them on the radio shows. And I, I liked how different it was and how raw it sounded, and I thought, ah, I'd love to be able to do that. Really? Yeah. How do you go about building something? Do you start with an idea? What kind of idea do you start with? Usually I start with a, a sound that I want to try to reproduce and then I try to figure out how to make it. And then often I, I end up with something that's pretty far removed from what I had in mind, but um, generally something that I enjoy. I'm trying at the moment to be more disciplined in, in uh, uh, ending up where I wanted to end up and actually trying to get to the sound that I wanted to get to. Well, sometimes I just, you know, open up a new, a new patcher and go, oh, where, where, where am I going to end up? And then just start adding objects and then seeing what happens. I go on what I've already done, uh, you know, but, but then try to, sometimes it's just nice to start from scratch. And, um, you know, maybe I'm going to focus on something that does that is more kind of sequence oriented where you know the I'm trying to change how how things are triggered you know and and make that the focus uh, rather than coming up with a new like sound itself and you've used a lot of found sounds over the years too yeah and then I reuse them uh, yes I, in fact I, I seem to go back to a a core of just a, a core group of sounds again and again and sometimes I'll record the processing of them and then use the processed sound afterwards. Where did you get that idea? Was it just a practical one or did you it actually was totally practical it? and it was it, a lot of it comes from you know sitting down and going right I want to come up with something really original and I want to do uh, do this using just totally new material and then being really dissatisfied with the results and then the last minute, well, I got to come up with something. Well, that one worked before. I'll use that one again in a different way. And that's so practical in that way. And that happens very often.
one thing I, I also wanted to talk to you about is is your record label. You know, how did that come about? What sort of things were you trying to accomplish? Well, that came about um, because I had things on my hard drive that were just sitting on my hard drive, and I'm very I'm I'm terrible at promotion. In fact, I feel uncomfortable with the whole idea of promotion, um, of self-promotion anyway, and. Uh, with some encouragement. It had been something that had been on my mind anyway to do. I decided to just put out some of my own material on, on a record. And then uh, once I did one, I thought, hey, I should legitimize it and do an, another release. Um, so that's when I did uh, Raglani's um, record, uh, Web of Light. Um, and then uh, before that one was finished, I had the third and fourth ones going as well. Um, and then I've, I've done six so far. You started out by making vinyl. Yes. So what was that driven by? What, well, why did you I go there? I was a big vinyl fan. I think that that goes back to uh, being really into electronica. I, I, I just felt, and I didn't really, I didn't really consider it beyond kind of a gut feeling that you know this was the legitimate way to release music. I like the feel of a physical record. It seems more um, substantial than a CD. I don't know what the, if that's exactly the right word, but it, that's close enough. One of the things that I've thought about with vinyl is that to me it's digital is a replication of something, whereas vinyl being analog is actually the real thing. There you go, yeah. <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways. And I think about it even more when you're talking about vintage recordings, oh, old sure. jazz recordings or something. You know, oh, for these, sure. These are the real thing. This is not the copy. You know? Yeah. I, I, I remember a, a family friend growing up who was a concert pianist talking about, uh, he said listening to a CD was like listening to a credit card. You had your own lathe for a while. Yes, I did. Yeah, oh, that was really fun. Yeah, what did, how did that come about? What did, you, uh, what did you get to do with the lathe? That, that, was there some things that came about as a result of having that equipment? Yeah, I cut some uh, records for some other people. I did another record for Raglani, um, which is his, his most expensive release ever. I think to, to get the full release, it's over $1,000. Uh, but it's, uh, it's actually a soundtrack to a movie, so it's like the press release for this movie. Um, and there were three tracks on it, and there was a limited edition of 14 of them. That was really fun to be a part of. Um, and then I also did another record for uh, a group called Worm Hands, and um, I cut those on plastic picnic plates, um, which work remarkably well. I also tried cutting on laser discs. Um, that didn't work as well. I was hoping that would work better, but I didn't have a heated uh, cutting element and apparently if you've got a heated uh, bit it, it will cut a lot better because it actually when I was cutting it would squeak and that squeak also embedded itself into the cut so uh, yeah <laughs> unfortunate unfortunate yeah. <laughs> wow to me there's a connection between you having the guts or whatever to go out and get a lathe for yourself instead of just sending stuff off to a pressing plant Oh. And, and using see. things like what I've seen you do lately, which is using the iPad oh. to control MSP, using all kinds of different, what I call tools, different oh. kinds of things that allow you to achieve something. Especially with the iPad, I felt like I was making a compromise in a way. But then again, I mean, there's, it's multi-touch, there's a lot you can do with it, um, why not? Does it seem sterile? Is that part of the compromise? You yeah, think? it does seem a bit sterile. And there's that, that logo on the back of it, and uh, which on mine is covered up. But then again, it's a solid product. They made it well, so yeah. And use what you can. Use what you can. Yeah. yeah.
So what about that spontaneity thing? I mean, we, we've done, you and I, we've done a couple of jams together. So what are you thinking about when we're doing these live jams? Well, first of all, I really love doing those. And I, I love many things about improvising. I love learning how to listen or thinking about listening. And because I haven't really built any patches where I feel that I have particularly good control of, of pitch yet, but I have, I feel I've got some, some good ones where I can really get a good feel for um, a texture and amplitude and kind of just the full onness. I'm listening to what other people are doing and trying to figure how I can follow and, and if there are times when I could even lead and other people could follow. I, I don't know, it's really fun. It's really fun thinking about the whole process of listening and, follow, and leading and following. Yeah. Uh, especially from something as imprecise as what I'm, I'm doing at the moment anyway, with people who really are very precise, uh, I think. A lot of times the improvisations that I've done with electronic equipment is such a unknown entity. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, you know, I can turn, or, turn, turn around and play the piano and I know what I'm going to get out of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, what, what do you think about that uncertainty or whatever? In, in many ways, I, I, I find being comfortable with uncertainty very liberating. And I like, I like thinking about that in, in, in the biggest way possible as well. Um, to just be comfortable with uncertainty and to, uh, and to realize that you know, the control I have is more a control over the ranges of uncertainty than a specific control. And, uh, and to kind of let go w within that. That's really, really nice. I like that. I kind of want to, at some point, do something choral. Some of uh, Ligeti's choral pieces oh, yeah. are, uh, are just amazing. So are yeah. you into minimalism, would you say? Yes, although I'm very disappointed by how maximal the things that I end up trying to do turn out often. I admire minimalism a lot. I like the idea of being able to reduce things to their simplest elements. And, and maybe that's something that I really want to devote effort to in, in, in everything. I agree. I like minimalism too. And it, and it just strikes me as being, man, it takes a lot of guts to get up there and be really minimalist. Yeah. Because I'm not sure if the audience is ready for it, something really minimal. Does that matter? Does the audience Does matter? matter? I like to care about the audience. I think it's nice to be kind. I get a bit put off by like austerity. There have been artists that I've been really into and then I've either seen them perform or had interactions with and then the attitude becomes an obstacle to get past. I'm, I'm feeling at the moment, and I, I feel this is likely to continue, that the, the attitude is important and being kind is important. I had a friend last year and his thing was, uh, he was talking about the verbing of nouns and I liked that concept uh, of uh, activating static things of just as a concept and it's sort of a concept outside of language, you know, in at least common language. And that's what I, I like about sound and, and music is how it says the things that want to be said that are outside of what is normally sayable. John's amazing because he's a monster with technology. But what really gets me is his commitment, his honesty, and his intensity. A lot of us think about starting a label, but do we do it? A lot of us need better tools, but do we make the commitment? A lot of us are searching for a venue, a place to connect, but do we go out and make it? Maybe it's that pirate thing, or like the iPad, use what you can, give nothing back. I don't know if all this really makes as much sense in real life as it does in video, but sometimes I hope so. But here on the street, in the moment, it's just a lot of uncertainty. But that's what's most exciting of all, finding a way to pull it all together in one wildly uncertain jam that turns out pretty amazing.